The Duchess of Sussex has been rushed out of a sweltering market in Fiji following a security scare and crowd control issues. Meghan, 37, was at the marketplace in Suva, the Fijian capital, to meet female stallholders involved with the UN Women's Project Markets for Change before she was promptly whisked away by security. The planned 20-minute tour was cut short, with the Duchess spending just six minutes in the market before she was hurriedly moved along. The swift change in schedule was put down to a security risk, with Kensington Palace blaming massive crowds. Dramatic footage shows the moment her chief bodyguard and other aides realized something was amiss and swiftly escorted her through the crowds. Many of the gathered people in the crowd were disappointed at the mother-to-be's exit, as onlookers described the meeting as well-behaved and friendly. The decision to cut short the engagement came as a surprise and disappointment to many in the market. They pointed out that the crowds were being kept well back from the Duchess by police and royal security and she was not being mobbed. It's such such a shame as we were all very excited to meet her, said one stallholder who had been positioned to expect a visit from the Duchess. We started preparing for the visit three weeks ago and he had been meant to meet her but she left without even saying hello. Flanked by her female head of protection and a Fijian security official, Meghan's safety was kept paramount as she was quickly moved on from the scheduled engagement. The officer, who the male is not naming for security reasons, has been working with the couple for several months and is currently with them on tour, overseeing the massive police operation that surrounds them. Before the chaos, the Duchess of Sussex was seen gazing adoringly at her husband as the royal couple got into the island spirit in brightly colored outfits as they embarked on a morning of engagements in Fiji. Prince Harry and wife Meghan arrived at the University of the South Pacific campus in Suva on Wednesday, to mark the university's 50th anniversary. Meghan was wearing a bright blue and pink tiered silk fig Frederica printed ruffle dress, while her husband was in a blue tropical print shirt. Her dress featured a wrap silhouette with a V neckline, long sleeves and a symmetrical ruffle hem with pom-poms and seashell detail. She completed her look with a tropical flower headpiece. The Duchess has her personal hairdresser, George Northwood, with her in Fiji. The royals were greeted by pipe-playing musicians and cheering crowds as they walked down the red carpet which had been rolled out for their arrival, with Meghan mobbed by young fans. The Duchess later gave a speech to university students, the first words she has spoken during their 16-day Commonwealth tour, which is more than halfway through. Meghan spoke of how the journey of higher education is an incredible, impactful and pivotal one. I am also fully aware of the challenges of being able to afford this level of schooling for many people around the world, myself included. It was through scholarships, financial aid programs and work-study where my earnings from a job on campus went directly towards my tuition, that I was able to attend university, she said. And, without question, it was worth every effort. Everyone should be afforded the opportunity to receive the education they want, but more importantly the education they have the right to receive. And for women and girls in developing countries, this is vital. Providing them with access to education is the key to economic and social development. Because when girls are given the right tools to succeed, they can create incredible futures, not only for themselves but also for those around them. Inside the university, the couple observed a cultural performance on the effects of climate change in the Pacific from the university's Oceania dance troupe, before meeting students studying subjects from agriculture to women's development. Their royal highnesses were hosted by Queen's young leader Elisha Azima Banu and Commonwealth Youth Award winner El Riz Kumar, both of whom are USP students. The event was live-streamed to a number of the university's campuses throughout the Pacific region. Harry also made a speech in his capacity as Commonwealth Youth Ambassador. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have arrived on Queensland's Fraser Island as their whirlwind tour down under continues, with Prince Harry taking part in a traditional welcome to country ceremony as a pregnant Meghan Markle rests at a luxury resort. After touching down in Queensland on Monday morning from Sydney, the royal couple went their separate ways. The Duke took the barge to the island, 
which was reportedly refurbished ahead of the occasion, while the Duchess, dressed in a maroon, polka dot dress by in other stories, arrived on a whale watching vessel. Crowds had lined up along the Kingfisher jetty to catch a glimpse of the couple as they stepped off their boats, with both the Duke and Duchess giving a wave to excited onlookers when they arrived. During their time on the island, the couple will be based at the luxurious Kingfisher Bay Resort, which boasts secluded beach houses, timber lodges surrounded by the bush and deco-friendly hotel rooms. Prince Harry and Meghan earlier appeared relaxed as they boarded a Royal Australian Air Force jet at Sydney Airport, bound for the Wilderness Island, after traveling from Admiralty House, their harbor city accommodation. Hervey Bay Eco Marine Tourist posted a photo of the Duchess on their Instagram page with the caption, Very exciting day here today at the marina. The glowing Meghan Markle passing through on her way to Curry. Their Royal Highnesses are visiting Fraser Island or Curry as it is known by the traditional owners the Butchola people, as part of the dedication of the site to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy, QCC. The QCC raises awareness of indigenous forests and allows countries in the Commonwealth to exchange knowledge and ideas about the best practice for forest conservation. The Duke of Sussex later headed to Lake Mackenzie after the QCC dedication and meet with local elders to learn about the history of the island, before heading down to 75 Mile Beach as part of a busy day of engagements. Prince Harry took off his shoes and walked in the shallows of the lake after the welcome to country where he had his feet brushed with leaves during the indigenous ceremony. The expecting Duchess of Sussex is foregoing her royal duties for the day due to the rough terrain of the island, but there will be plenty for her to do even as tourist. Kensington Palace has confirmed Meghan will spend Monday relaxing at the resort, where the couple will spend the night but she is hoped to be well enough for a meet and greet with the public later in the afternoon. He spent a considerable amount of time talking to the local Butchola people who showed him around the world's largest sand island. The Duke was expected to take particular interest in his visit to the beach, as it served as a training base for an elite Z special force unit during World War II. The unit used the area to prepare for jungle and amphibious training ahead of missions into Asia and are credited with playing a major role in Australia's victory at Singapore Harbour. The ruins of the Z Force Commando School remain on the western side of the island, nearby the resort. While on Fraser Island, Prince Harry will also meet National Park Rangers to learn about the island's unique animal and plant life and its history of logging. Due to their famed toughness, Fraser Island's hardwood trees were used to build the London docks in the 1930s. Later, the Duke will head to Kingfisher Bay and walk along the jetty hopefully with Meghan. The couple are expected to be greeted by an enthusiastic crowd of fans, as tickets to cross to Kingfisher Bay have sold out for the day. Fraser Island is the fourth stop on the royal couple's Australian leg of their tour, after they visited Sydney, Dubbo, in the New South Wales Central West, and Melbourne. Following their visit to Fraser Island, the royal couple are heading to Fiji then Tonga before a trip back to Sydney for the closing ceremony of the Invictus Games. Their mammoth 16-day tour finishes in New Zealand. Meghan Markle has compared pregnancy to having jet lag after wowing crowds on Bondi Beach, Sydney. The Duchess of Sussex gave an insight into her pregnancy during an anti-bad vibe circle hosted by mental health campaign group One Wave. Meghan, 37, spoke with 35-year-old Charlotte Connell who is much further along the line at 23 weeks pregnant, about how motherhood has had her waking up at 4.30 a.m. to do yoga. Ms. Connell said, Meghan told me that pregnancy was like having jet lag. She said she was up at 4.30 a.m. this morning doing yoga in her room as she couldn't sleep. It's a bit of a double whammy for her, she said as she has both the baby and the jet lag to contend with. We both talked about how you feel jet lagged even though you have not traveled anywhere. Even in her jet lag, she got up to do yoga this morning at 4.30 am. Physical activity like yoga and surfing is so good for healing your mind. Mental health is something Prince Harry has spoken out on and is a keen campaigner to help raise awareness.
Meghan and Harry listened to the group for 10 minutes and shared their own personal experiences with the illness to the local community surfing group. In a statement Kensington Palace said, to turn the tide on stigma surrounding mental health issues, one wave is encouraging people to share their experiences of living with mental health issues and the power of opening up using. Dabri Eulick Whale, 37, who took part in the session was full of praise for the relatable royal couple. She said, Oh my goodness, they were just so real, so relatable. They shared their own experiences, which was amazing. Shortly after Meghan and Harry had a go at waxing a surfboard as they dipped their toes in the sand at the famous Australian beach. Meghan wore a sleeveless Martin Grant dress with espadrille tie wedges with a garland of flowers around her neck, whilst Harry wore a light blue shirt, beige trousers and espadrilles. The pair are currently on day four of their whirlwind 16-day tour of Australia, Fiji, Tonga, and New Zealand. Tomorrow the royal couple will be on Cockatoo Island where they will be watching the Invictus Games, a competition created by Prince Harry which will see 18 nations represented.